You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive Scottish football content. You have the heart of a giant, show it. You got the pride of a lion, roaring. Maybe you need big love, you don't need to give up. Cause something real is waiting there for you. You've been flying solo, now it's time to let go. Hi folks and welcome to the latest episode of the SM Media Scottish Women's Football Show. I'm Scott McPike, it's an absolute pleasure to be your host as always and I'm delighted to welcome a very special guest onto the show. It's an absolute pleasure to introduce an MBE, a member of the Scottish Football Hall of Fame, one of the greatest footballers in Scotland's history. It's a pleasure to welcome the one and only Julie Fleet. And Julie, welcome to the show, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. That was quite an intro. And so I don't know if I'm going to be able to live up to that. I tried my best at a hair start. It's I'm <laughs> glad you like it. Uh, yeah, done a good job. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you on. It's obviously a really interesting time in the, the women's game in Scottish football at the moment. We're just we've got the cup fight, the Scottish Cup final set. It's going to be an old form between Rangers and Celtic. First of all, before we can get into the games, it was a, a cracking advert for both semi-finals to be at Hamden. It generated a lot of buzz. How good was that to see? I think just the fact that being at Hamden just shows you the growth in the women's game. Um, really competitive matches as well. Um, taken right up to the final whistle, something we want to see. Um, and yeah, it just it's just brilliant to be able to see that now. And you kind know, of knowing myself what it was like before and the, the difference in now and the opportunities that are available to the female players. Um, it's just everything's just becoming far more professional and it's becoming a better sport to watch as well. It's obviously as well, uh, Rangers beat Motherwell uh, after the extra time and Celtic beat Glasgow City too. Now, are really obviously kind of two tight games, but it was obviously four really good sides that took part. Rangers and Celtic in the final. I'm going to put you in the spot. Who do you see winning it? Oh, I can't call that. <laughs> uh, I've been at um, the kind of recent old firm games in the, between the ladies' sides, and there's absolutely nothing between them. I think it's it's whatever team deals with the occasion best. It's just one of the games that you you just can't call, and a very competitive fixture, one that of course has plenty of history beside behind both clubs. Um, but at the moment. Um, the way the squad that both teams have had have been far superior to so many in the league. Um, and hopefully we're, we're looking for an exciting game. Um, very close, I'm quite sure. And, but I'm not going to call that one. That's tight to call. It's going to be played on the 28th of May. It's obviously as well, very, we're, we're talking about how tight the, that is between the kind of top three and the league is very much the same. There's only three points between uh, Glasgow City, Celtic and Rangers. Obviously they have to play each other as well. It just shows you, though, it's it's extremely competitive between the top three, and it's again just to have this kind of publicity as well. Obviously, you you you're kind of seeing on Sky as well. How big's that? Obviously, getting the the Sky deal and things like that. Like, how far? Like, how far is the women's game coming in that regard? Since, since even when you were playing, I think the the fact that we've got multiple uh, broadcasting mm-hmm. uh, companies that are looking to get involved in the women's game. BBC Alba have been a massive supporter of. Uh, the female game for a long time, BBC as well, um, and now Sky Sports to add to it. So the fact that it's growing, the fact that we've got numerous uh, media outlets looking to get involved, I think that just shows you that um, it is an exciting game. There is a market for it. There are people who want to watch it. And you were talking uh, just there about the three sides um, that we've got. For a long time, we only maybe had two sides battling it out. We now have three, hoping that we can get the Edinburgh sides mm-hmm. involved as well, and Hibs and Hearts, two really big clubs. Um, I was at their game um, on Saturday night, and I th- I'm hoping that next season they can put in more of a push. Hearts have had a really strong season this year, um, have probably excelled more than, than they felt they would they were going at this stage. So the three sides at the top, as you're saying, in your Glasgow City, your Celtic Rangers, if we could get five challenging, it would be even better, because it's really exciting. You look at it now that the, the title is going to go all the way to the wire. And I think the fact that they have that split now, the top six, mm-hmm. they can play each other more times. Um, it just does add a bit more excitement to the game as well. And the kind of this season, obviously, the one thing like there's a lot of standout players. Like who, who to yourself, that's kind of been some of the standout players in the league this season? 
Oh, that's a that's a tough one. There's, I mean, you've got Chinchilla at, at City, who's who's been outstanding. You've got for me, I think Sam Kerr's had a really strong season. Um, at Rangers, Celtic, it's so difficult to to call. I think they're what they're also doing here in Scotland is making it an exciting league to attract players. Mm-hmm. So you've got players who are wanting to come, um, kind of all over Europe. Um, to try and be a part of it as well. So, and at the same time, of course, we want to develop our own um, and try and see if we can bring through some some younger players. Um, Emma Watson at the at the last Rangers game that I had gone to watch, who was who was just outstanding, and from there getting into the national side. That's what we want to see. We yeah. want to see we want to see teams giving younger players an opportunity and and making an environment that they can develop in. And, um, certainly for it's working for, for Emma Watson at, at the moment. And speaking of obviously yourself and kind of your upbringing as well, obviously coming from a, a famous family in, in terms of football, like your dad and your uncle and your brother and things like that, like you obviously had a talented background in ba- uh, basketball and hockey as well. What was it about football that was uh, the reason you wanted to kind of go with that? You know, it's a, that's a difficult question to, to answer because I love team sports. Um, I love the team environment, but I can't I can't put my finger on what was about football. It's it's a sport that I've been passionate about since probably I could walk, um, and I I don't know what sets it apart from basketball and hockey for me, but I love playing both these sports and and still would enjoy watching or or getting involved in a wee game as well. But for me, football it was only ever going to be football for me. It was only ever going to be that one. Um, sport that I would want to do for, for kind of the rest of my, my time um, but what it is about it, I've no idea I love the sport, I'm at the moment involved with grassroots football um, with my own kids um, and that's kind of keeping my hand in it, I'm a teacher I'm at the girls tournament um, as well at the moment um, down in North Ayrshire and, um, there's, just, there's just something I can see in my own kids eyes when they go to football training They've taken part in swimming and gymnastics and dance. But there's just something special about football. I see when they, after they've finished a game and the buzz that they've got and when they get in the car and talking about it. And it's just like no other sport for me. Um, and it's it's just something that's I've got so much out of it. Not just the participation of it, but the friendships, the different countries I've been able to travel to. Um so for me, football's just given me way more than than just a healthy kind of lifestyle. It's been a lot more than that for me. And obviously, like going to America as well after your time at Air was like kind of reading up. You kind of turned it down in the past. What was the kind of reason you eventually kind of made the call to to go to America? And how big a, a learning club was that for you? Well, what what I had turned down was going to do a scholarship. Right. Um, I had never turned down playing professionally. Um, so for me. At the time when I was leaving school, I was 17, uh, moving to, to Edinburgh to go to university was, was far enough. I'm a home person, I'm extremely, extremely close to my family um, and that's what I turned down. I turned down the opportunity to, to go and do a scholarship in America, but when I was getting to the end of my university degree, um, I was 21, I had more experience in terms of football, playing in the national side. Um, I had a few more years behind me to grow up as well. And that's when I was offered um, the opportunity to play as a full-time professional. And that's just not an opportunity that you can ever yeah. give up. I was, um, it was the biggest league in the world at the time. Um, it was full-time. It was playing against and with the best players in the world, playing with world champions. Julie Foudy had just... She was a captain of the USA at the time, um, had just lifted... The World Cup, the the Olympics, so it was a chance to go there um, and play in that kind of environment. And I knew myself there was a lot of challenges in terms of being homesick and and going away and um, making a kind of new life for myself. And that was a massive challenge for me. But at the same time, it was one that I just could not, um, I couldn't pass up. And I'm I'm really glad to this day that I didn't, um, that I managed to kind of face all these challenges that at the time were. Um, really tough for me um, and yeah really just to get that opportunity was, was a special time in my, in my life 
And then obviously you make the the move to Arsenal and kind of splitting time between obviously your job and and playing. How hard was that back in the day? Like obviously Arsenal at the time were obviously kind of one of the big teams in England. Like how how hard was it to kind of split the time between work and playing? Yeah, it was. It it was difficult. Um, it was kind of all about trying to to manage my time. Um, I was at the time had just came back from playing professionally. We wasn't a professional league. Um, here in Britain at the time um, and I got the opportunity to go to Arsenal who were very much an extremely professional um, group, really professional club, very much a, the ladies team were very much a, a part of the whole club in general. So when they offered me the opportunity to to then go um, and still continue to, to live in Scotland, to continue my job as um, a PE teacher up here. My my degree probably wouldn't have transferred down there. Um, my life was here. I would have had to have given up my job. I wouldn't have been a full time professional. So, it 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 wasn't really financially possible for me at the time to uproot and go move down south. Um, and Arsenal offered me the opportunity to to kind of balance both. I obviously had to to train up here. I had to train up here with a a, a guys team, a boys team, or a men's team. Um, and my brother's team and as long as I went down to, to London for the game and I was fully fit um, then they were happy with, with that arrangement and initially I thought I'll try it for a month or two we'll see how it gets on I think I signed the January and I had the rest of the season up until May and I thought well, I'll just make this a trial period and if it if it works for me in the club then we'll see what happens beyond that and I think I, I was there for seven or eight years and obviously, in the the seven years, you won seventeen trophies, won a won the women's cup, won the Premier League seven times, won the UEFA Women's Cup. What's that that oh six oh seven season? Obviously, one in six trophies. What was the kind of highlights of that season? I think obviously the the Champions League win was the biggest of my club career, um, and I think um, one of the things that now you finish your career and look back on that. Um, it's been a it was a really really special moment, um. So I was part of an extremely successful side. Like the the players that I played alongside Arsenal were some were world class players and playing in a semi professional environment, and what they had was was just a really strong club. So, um, it was a pleasure to play there. I wouldn't have played there for so long had it not been for Vic Akers. The quite a few different coaches came in as well and learned an awful lot from all of them. Um and yeah, my time at Arsenal is as you say, when you look at the, the cups and stuff was successful, but it was it was more than that. It was getting an opportunity to, to kinda of play alongside and develop as a player alongside some of the, the great players. Do you remember your Scotland debut? I do, yes, yes. I come off the bench. I was fifteen years old, come off the bench at Somerset Park against Wales. Um and yeah, from the, from then on that was kind of the start of of my Scotland career so I remember getting into the squad it was a bit of a kind of changeover period uh, for the women's game so they were almost trying to bring through a lot more youth in the game and um, kind of change things um, and luckily it was at the right time for me I was a part of that um, alongside quite a few of my friends which made it a lot easier um, a lot of the girls I'd kind of played um, club football with who were similar age to me um, all kind of got into the squad at, at the same time so um, I was just lucky that there was that transition period at the right time for me And like just some of the highlights of your Scotland career 16 goals in one match in 2000 That's that must be something you'll hold in high regard <laughs> Do you know what I, I don't remember an awful lot about all of the games I played in or, or goals and stuff there are a, when I look back now on it um what I think about is the friendships that I made and um, all the memories that, that I've got from from my time as a, a national team player. I've still got best friends to this day that um, I played in numerous international games with. Um, and they're the things that I look back and, and feel most proud about is the friendships and um, the fact that to this day they're, they're still very close friends. Um, and for me, we were an extremely tight team a really tight squad, a, a group that would have given everything for each other. There was many moments where we weren't on the, the correct side of the scoreline. Many times we were playing against world champions and goals down. But what we had was a brilliant spirit within within the team, a group of players who, 
worked very, very hard for each other and, and just had a great bond off the pitch. And how good is it now to see like the, the kind of progress in the national team, like the, the team obviously getting to a, a Euros and a World Cup and things like that? It must be like they, they must be like must like kind of give you pride though to see how good a place they're in now as as the kind of progression goes on. Oh, absolutely. I mean, um a, a big fan, a Scotland fan, both the, the women's and the, the men's team. So to see them doing so well, um, and to also know um, quite a few of the faces and, and know their journey as well. It's not been easy for the national players who are in the squad now either. Um, and to see that they're now, they're, all their hard work is kind of paying off. They're getting the success and they're getting the attention that they, they deserve. Um, and long may it continue. And obviously when you kind of left Arsenal as well, we made this, the kind of step back to Scotland, like joining Celtic and spending two years there, then going to Glasgow City. Like how... How much better was was Scottish the Scottish game compared to when you you left it? Yeah, it'd been years and years from I had played. I think prior to kind of getting back into the game, I had left as a a twenty one year old playing at Air United, um, at a local public park where there was maybe um three people watching your game if you were lucky. Mm-hmm. So, um, to then come back when it had became far more professional, um. That was that was great to be able to see the growth in the game at that time as well. Um, I think I I'd come back after I'd had my second daughter, um, to play. So it was it was a difficult time for me in terms of trying to get fit and trying to be. I had quite a lot of injuries at that time, and um, it certainly wasn't a part of my career that um that was excelling. But I I still wanted to be involved in the game. I felt that um I had missed it an awful lot. Um, having step, having taken a step back, um, but just to be a part of it, and, and when I joined the the Celtic team, I couldn't believe the talent that was coming through. It was a absolutely fantastic young side that they had built from from a youth team all the way through, and to get the opportunity to play alongside some of the players, they were they were really really great girls in terms of um, being respectful and listening and wanting to learn. Um, and that was great to be a part of that as well, to go in there as an older player and then see the, the quality that they had. I think it was Fiona Brown and Chloe Arthur, Heather Richardson, loads of brilliant players, Kelly Clark, loads of players that have gone on to have a really successful career um, and to kind of be a, a part of their team um, and kind of be a part of their journey um, was, was, was really great and um, I felt that if that Celtic side had been able to keep a hold of all of those youth players, then they could have gone on and and done something special. But um, I think they they lost a few to Glasgow City, um, and then um, which obviously weakened them. And like Glasgow City as well, kind of winning two league titles in a Scottish Cup. But how impressed were you with the setup there and and going there and kind of seeing the the progress they've made as well? I was kind of really, I was aware of uh, Glasgow City. Obviously, they had been aside from when I had played um, and Laura Montgomery had had just worked tirelessly to to build them up and make them this huge force in, in women's football. And then to go there and see how professional they were, to see how they um, how they managed to kind of not the fact that they weren't attached to a, a senior club, but how they managed to run their club and, and make it such a professional outfit to compete in Europe as well um, so to get that opportunity um, to go there I was um, I felt very lucky to, to be a part of, of that club and be able to see the, the work that went on behind the scenes as well And what's it like as well obviously like I, as you say a lot of young players coming through what's it like being a kind of mentor for, for players like that as well because a lot of players do look up to you obviously because of your experience in the game like how do you kind of cope with that? Um, I, I I don't know. I'm I, I'm just kind of I feel quite lucky to be able to help in any way I can. I, I think I'm quite a a relaxed and level headed person. I think the, when I was in the team, I was able to kind of build up relationships with with both younger players um, and continue the relationships I'd had with the the older players I'd been in a squad with. Um, I think I was probably quite a calming influence um, in the dressing room, and it's just about making. Um, building relationships with people um, and certainly with uh, the teams that I went into they always ha- already had um, a great environment to, to, to work and learn 
And um, there was never a team I went into where it was difficult to settle in and people didn't make you feel welcome. Um, so I was very lucky there that I could do that um, and be a part of of that kind of setup that they already had. Absolutely nothing to do with me. It was already in place before I went there and I was just another wee piece of the, the jigsaw within that squad. And some of the kind of individual honours you had as well, obviously receiving your MBE in 2008, being inducted into the, the Scottish Football Hall of Fame, like they must be really kind of high in your list of you know, accomplishments in your, your career to get. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously very proud of, of the things. The MBE was, was one that when you start out in football, you're looking to try and win league titles and um, as a striker to be the top goal scorer. But it's never something you think about is to be recognised in that in that way. So that kind of came out in the blue for me. And um, it, was a, it was a great day. It was a really special day. And one that you could get to share with, I got to share with um, kind of the rest of my family as well. And like obviously your, your kids as well, do they kind of want to follow in your footsteps? Like is that, have they ever kind of discussed about wanting to, to follow in your footsteps? They, they all play. The three, uh, my three girls play. Um, probably my middle daughter's the one who's um, kind of said that when she grows up she wants to be a footballer. My wee one's only five at the moment, so she's a, she's not at an age where she knows what she wants to do. My eldest is 13 and she's only first played us. This is her in her first season of football. She wasn't interested before. She's now got the bug. She loves it. She's finding out that it's more than just what happens on the pitch. It's about the relationships that she's building with people from different areas of um of Ayrshire, with people from all different schools and um it's not something I ever pushed them into, which is why Ella's thirteen and discovering it for herself. I think I always wanted her to find her own way and, and find whatever makes her happy and whatever's uh, whatever she's gonna have a passion for and it just seems to be that at this moment in time in her life it is football. Um Sophia's ten and she's played football um probably since she was maybe four um and again she loves it so we'll just see I'll, I'll be there to support them if they want support and I'll be there to offer them advice but um as my dad was with me it, it'll allow me to to make my own decisions and I think that was the best way it meant that I fell in love with football rather than I was pushed to to join football and play um so um I'll do the same that's my kind of style of parenting and um, I'll always be there if if they need advice about anything. Brilliant. What about like kind of moving into the kind of media side of it as well? Obviously, like working in TV and kind of doing like social media stuff. How good's that kind of been? How much you kind of learn doing that? Um, I think it allows me the chance to kind of stay involved um in the game as well. It's I think as a footballer again, it's not something that there wasn't a lot of media attention around about our game, so I didn't get the chance to to kind of learn um how to, to be in the media, how to kind of carry myself. So it, it definitely has taken a bit of getting used to um, something something different. I'm starting to enjoy it more and more now. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big part of the game now. There's um, so many opportunities now for, for girls to be a part of, of the media. And um, it gives me the opportunity to, to be able to see games and, and be involved in games. Um, because I'm not as a as a coach, um, can I do to my commitments as as a teacher and my commitments with my own kids and in their football. So, I mean, I'm saying as a coach, I coach at grassroots levels, but I'm uh, but I'm I'm meaning the more in the the professional game. Really, for the kind of most most of our interviews, we do a, a quick fire round where we put you in the spot. Are you, are you up for that? Yeah, go for it. Right. The first question is, who's the best player you've ever played with? Uh, played with I would say is Shannon McMillan who was a US international Brilliant. best player you played against Joy Fawcett who played for the USA as well as a centre back favourite stadium you've ever played in uh, Highbury Highbury best coach you've played under oh that's tough Oh, that's how can I call that? I'm <laughs> gonna go with I'm gonna go with Vera Pow, my first um my my first Scottish national team coach. Funniest ever teammate. Stacey Cook. 
favourite film or TV programme? Hey, friends. The top three women's players of all time. Hey, hey, top three. Mia Hamm. Hey, Birgit Prince. And Kim Little. And the final question, your favourite memory you've got in football? Favourite memory is winning 17 nil against... Oh, no, that's hard, actually. I'm, I'm going to change it. I'm going to go with winning the Champions League. Brilliant. Julie, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very much for your time. I really thank appreciate you very it. much. Brilliant. No bother. Thank you very thank much. You.